Welcome to DMV Spotlight on ESPN 630, the sports capital, where we shine a light on local stories from D.C., Maryland, and Virginia to inform, enlighten, and inspire you from local organizations that are doing the same. I'm Barbara Britt, and I'm delighted to welcome as my guest this morning on DMV Spotlight on ESPN 630, the sports capital, I have Alan Lomax. He is the chairman of the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition of Alexandria, and Emma Beal, who is the coordinator of the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition of Alexandria. And you have a nice little acronym for it. What do we call it? SAPCA. SAPCA. Of course, it's DC. There's an acronym yeah, for everything. Okay. And I want to also mention that, that Alan Lomax is also the chair for the Partnership for a Healthier Alexandria. That ties in very well with what you do. You've been on the the SAPCA Board of Directors for 10 years. Yes. So that's a very long time to be involved in this. So let's start at the beginning. What What is the main mission and thrust of the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition of Alexandria? Sure. It's actually to ensure that youth are not using alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, and other drugs. And educating parents about how to how to work with their kids on that and actually bring it together a broad coalition in order to do this because this is not just one organization's issue it's, it affects the entire community so it's law enforcement it's the parks and rec departments department of community services as local nonprofits across the board that work together and everybody works hand in hand yeah and in recent years there's been more of a focus on asset building so seeing r- recognizing adults as those asset builders and young people, whether or not they have children, and saying, hey, you play a role. You can help our young people develop their skills and be the best they can be. So alongside with the information we've always been providing about about the risks of using substances, it's, again, those protective factors and saying, hey, how can we make sure our young people have opportunities to build their skills, have supervised safe environments where they can just be be young people and i would think at some point um alan and emma that this also spills over for us adults as well it it does um so actually we're we're part of the alexander opioid work group which actually focuses across the board for adults and to youth um, to reduce opioid use. As you know, opioids have been a major problem across the entire nation. So this is a cross-community effort as well, and we were invited. So we're, we're basically serve as the prevention element of that group. That's amazing. And I know opioids is one of those things that is really 10 years ago, it wasn't even on the radar, and just all of a sudden it has just... Bloomed is not the word I'm really searching for, but just exploded onto the scene. Yeah, unfortunately, although I would say about 10 years ago, people were starting to focus nationally about, you know, prescription drug take back days, about getting unused medicines out of cabinets because it was reducing access of children to those drugs. So that's kind of where it started. And so that is you do a great many things. I don't want to take our time today on DMV Spotlight to, to focus on those. But since you brought up the, the take back day, the prescription drug take back day, I know we've heard about that across the, the D.C. area. But in Alexandria, within your organization, how do you all do it? So we collaborate with the sheriff's department, the police department, as well as Alexandria Health Department volunteers, our own volunteers, and then our sites that host the event. So they're held every uh, quarter, four times a year, at the First Baptist Church, the Neighborhood Pharmacy of Delray, the Alexandria Police Department headquarters, and the fire station 210. And so basically they're just an opportunity for people to drop off unused or expired medication, no questions asked. We just say, are there are there needles? We can't accept needles. And just having people drop them off so so they don't have that access point whether it's someone who's searching for that medication or even someone who sees a friend or family member suffering and wants to help but that's not the best way that they can help so just letting people drop off their medication no questions asked. We and also, that's for anybody. Anybody yeah. can come in and drop off the medications. A lot of times people have un- uh, expired medications. Mm-hmm. They don't you don't want them to flush it down the toilet. Okay. That's a bozo no-no because it goes into the water right. system. Yeah. Um, and you don't want them to throw it in the trash. Mm-hmm. And I know there have been studies in the past, Alan, that say that kids get a lot of their, whether it's alcohol 
or or medicine or drugs of some kind they get it in the home right it's at the home and it's it you know it all comes down to access and ease of access mm -hmm. so by reducing ease of access no matter what we do uh, it reduces the potential of, of youth having those uh, and that's why that this medicine cabinet the the drug disposal is so important because people they, they get you know doctors prescribed medicine and they may not need it as much and it just sits in the medicine cabinet and people forget about it and then kids get interested and they look at it and sometimes they're looking for for something to try different and they will do that was there a was there a catalyst that created this coalition was there some event that that sparked this where Alexandria came together and said you know what we've had enough we need to do something well, actually, in 2006, we did a community health needs assessment. Mm -hmm. And in that community health needs assessment, one of the things that was identified was uh, substance use by youth. Mm -hmm. Our numbers were not good at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, in many of the areas, we were above the national averages. So we came together in 2007, and a group of people actually created the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition at that time period. And we were lucky enough in 2008, we applied for a federal grant, became a drug-free community through a federal grant that lasted for five years. And with that federal grant, you can actually get renewed for another five years. So we were actually fortunate enough through our work, our hard work with our partners, we were able to do the entire run for those 10 years underneath that federal grant. That's fantastic. And, and any community that you live in, when there's something that involves a child, whether it's a car crash, and a lot of times that relates back to drugs and alcohol as well. Mm -hmm. Um, that's when the community sort of comes together and says, we've had enough. We want to do something. So you all are doing quite a bit. And I do want to highlight that you have your Youth Leadership Conference in Alexandria coming right up. We do. Yeah, it's next week. So it's our sixth annual Youth Leadership Conference. It's a great opportunity for young people to build their skills, meet other young people. And then on the second day of the conference this year, we're having a networking fair. So that's an opportunity for our youth who have been building their skills to apply those skills and meet leaders in the community and find out about opportunities they can become involved with. So again, connecting them with those positive, caring adults and building those relationships. And this is open to high schoolers? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's high open to rising, students, rising ninth graders? Rising ninth through twelfth right. graders that live in Alexandria. Virginia. Oh, and that they can they can come and participate and and where is it being hosted? It's being hosted at the First Baptist Church. That's wonderful. And do they have to I'm assuming they would have to they register? They do. And we have information about that on our website. Fantastic. And it's uh, healthieralexandria.org/sapca and we'll give that again at the end of the DMV spotlight, but we just want to get that information out there. And then um, are there have you talked to students who have participated in the past, and how has it impacted them? So one of the students that sits on our board, Cadence, we we met her at the. I didn't. I wasn't in this position then, but but I believe the past coordinator met her at the youth leadership conference, and she's been on our board for a few years now. She's our secretary. She's she developed a video for us from one of our community meetings. So that's been that's been one of the. The successes. Yeah, uh, we we view this as really a training ground, uh, recruiting field. Uh, getting back to sports area, and w we find a lot of talented youth in there. A lot of youth already have leadership skills. What we're trying to do is enhance those skills and provide them the opportunity to use them. This is why the networking event is so important because really connecting them with organizations who. They say, oh, we need more adults and we, we need more youth involved, but they don't really know how to connect. So we say, here they are. Here's some of the most talented youth in the city right now. And as Emma mentioned, yes, Cadence came on board through through this conference. We identified her. We've identified a couple other people over the years who have actually been at the conference. And we go, oh, that's somebody who we're recruiting. We want to bring them right onto our board. That is So fantastic. it's been a wonderful avenue to do well, that. And Michael, hey, Michael as well. Yep. Michael is a student who he attended the last leadership conference last August and he became a, a member of our high school club and he said to me I just I am so bothered by by my peers vaping and I just want to do something about it and I lit up and I said yes I want to do something about it too but I need your input because you're on the ground you're in the school you know where this is happening and you know what kind of messaging will resonate I don't I don't know that. I'm I'm not a youth. 
And that's what's so critical about having them. And you, you all do really put your money where your mouth is because they sit on some of your boards. Right. We actually have three youth who sit on our board, this, the SAPCA board. And that's been since our existence. We recognize the importance. We recognize if you're programming for youth, you're trying to identify what's important to youth, you need the youth ideas there so you don't make mistakes and make errors and throughout the years there's been times when some adults have said let's let's we think we should do this we've seen this work and some youth have spoken up and said no wait and that's the importance that we have because our youth are not that when they come on our board they're told your voice is equal to everybody else you have to work as hard as everybody else you need to become be prepared uh as anybody else and Quite often, there many of them are better than the adults on the board. Well, the kids uh, understand, the teenagers understand. They're as you said, Emma. They're they're there in the schools. They see what happens. Vaping is unique because it's almost um, invisible yep. um, to teachers in some instances, administrators, parents. Um, it can sort of slip by you where you might be on telltale for other types of of uh, drug abuse, but vaping has seemed to at least initially slip under some of the radar, but it can be just as damaging mm -hmm. because of the nicotine involved. So um, when they go to this leadership conference, what are some of the activities that they'll participate in? So some of those activities are just team building activities, other, other topics just about what leadership is. We've had a workshop in the past that is also happening this year about financial planning and literacy. Also, we we make sure to host a professionalism workshop so these, these youth feel prepared for the networking session. We work very closely with youth to help plan this conference and say, what, what topics do you want to focus on? So again, saying, do you feel prepared to network? Oh, not really. Okay, well, well, let's make sure we have a workshop so you're ready to do that. And how? And go ahead. And actually, what we do is we we teach them how to be engaged in the community. We and we educate them about their opportunities to be engaged. We we tell them that you know if they have interest about how the school system is being run, you can go talk at the school board, and this is how how you can do it. If you have concerns about how the city council is appropriating money or how they're doing things with parks and rec and there's some is an interest this is how you can approach these are the techniques to approach the city council whether it's during a public hearing whether it's having a one-on-one -on -one conversation and after oftentimes having the city council members come having the mayor come and, and speak to them and our mayors we're now into our third mayor since we've been doing this youth leadership conference and every one of the mayors has always said i'm wide open come talk to me here's my card and many times the youth have taken that opportunity and it's been useful to the mayor and it's also been useful to the youth and some changes have occurred that's and, and this year we have a great opportunity it's 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 so funny how sometimes things just that fall into place beautifully the third day is the bonus day where the coordinator of the children youth and families master plan is working with the youth to help them build their legacy in alexandria and and share their input into the the creation of three different plans if and alan can speak more to to those plans sure so we're at a nexus in alexandria where the school system is starting to develop its next five-year strategic plan the partnership actually has the partnership for health of alexandria has a community health improvement plan and that expires at the end of this year and then the children youth master plan has now had its five years so it's expiring where we need to do a new one so uniquely, our director of the Department of Community and Human Services, the superintendent, and the health director all said, look, since we're doing all these three together, let's unify our effort. And we are now working together. We're creating a unified engagement plan. We're creating a unified communications plan for all three of the efforts. We, and we're looking for those targets of opportunity to actually sit down and talk to the community members together so they can see how these plans are going to align and be interlinked. And actually, on next Wednesday on August 14th will be one of those days where we sit down with the youth to get their input into those three plans. That's fantastic. And you were telling us before we came on air how unique the partnerships in Alexandria are when you go around the country and talk to other organizations that are trying to do similar things. Why, why is that happening? Tell us, tell us a little more about that. Well, Alexandria has always been one of these uh, communities where people like to work together. Um, and 
actually in Alexander, we we have wonderful leadership. Uh, the city council is always involved. They're very they're very involved in what's happening and, and what's going on. But we have the sheriff who's who's always checking to see how things going how things are happening. The sheriff has been on board with the partnership from the very from the very start. The police chief has been very involved. They're always asking how things are going. The director of the Parks and Rec, the director of the Department of Community and Services, the health director, um, the the head of the Alexandria on the Act for Alexandria, which is the local community foundation. They're all connecting and being involved because again, if if you're working and to make the making the lives better for youth, everybody is really concerned. They're focused on that. That is fantastic. And I want to highlight some of the other things that the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition of Alexandria does. You also have a project sticker shock. That's very cool. How does that work? Yeah, so every October during sticker shock, teams of youth and adults go out to local retailers and place stickers on multi-packs of alcohol, basically reminding adults that it's illegal to purchase alcohol legally and then illegally provide it to a minor so just providing that warning we have a press conference before the event where our local law enforcement come out and and thank the youth for taking time out of a saturday morning where they could be doing a number of other things but they're taking that time to send that message to to our community and i i want to ask are we still i mean we still hear this where the parents will reason with themselves and say well as long as my kid is drinking at my house i'm okay are we still fighting that giant we're still fighting that giant but but in the commonwealth of virginia a few years ago there was a change in a law called the social host law which actually altered um how parents were being perceived if an occur if 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 a, if a violation was happening before it was like they could get away with saying oh i didn't know they were drinking but now the law has been changed where if you have a reasonable assumption that all the children in there if they're friends of yours your child they're all going to be underage and if there's alcohol being served then you're responsible and it's ten thousand dollars so it's you can be fined two thousand five hundred dollars oh. per child oh. so if you have ten 10 teenagers that are underage at a party even if you say oh i didn't know they were underage if your child is 16 you have a reasonable assumption that your child's friends are also going to be around that age and again you can be fined two thousand five hundred dollars per child at that party and that's aside from any other civil or other legal penalties that's that is just and that's a a direct result of that social host law Mm -hmm. and that's in the commonwealth Yes, Correct. and actually we were very lucky because um, several years ago it was brought up to us about the weakness in the law before. So we were actually, here's another partnership. We sat down with our Commonwealth attorney, which is our local DA, and talked to them about it. And they gave us language. Then we went to one of our state delegates from Alexandria and talked to her about it. And she took it down to Richmond and it went right through in that, that session. So that was one of those wonderful things. So actually, we wanted something that would impact Alexandria, but impacting the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. So I, really I just that, that is such an encouragement because you hear so many roadblocks of how <laughs> delegates can't agree on anything to get anything done, and yet here you have a local, you know, partnership making it happen for their community, and, and then by extension for the rest of the state. Right. And, um, and yeah. some of it is just again that that informing and educating and recently we had another big legislative win with the passing of tobacco 21 in virginia july 1st of this year and we had a great intern that helped design a fact sheet that that we disseminated across the the country but also across virginia and saying hey this is something we created with you know virginia data national data and alexandria data if you'd like to populate this with your jurisdiction's data please feel free and, and it was passed, and it was such a win. And that's amazing, because yeah. given Virginia's history as a tobacco state, yep. um, you know, those of us who remember that mm-hmm. long ago, um, but that's that's truly was something that was, but I'm so thankful that you got that um, amazing support. Well, actually, we worked on that for three years. We went through three legislative sessions, but it, the third one, it just aligned up correctly, and having this fact sheet was really invaluable, because on one page, elected officials could, could see the facts, and see the evidence and and they could see in Alexander specifically and other jurisdictions could change it in the Commonwealth of Virginia to their own data but the overall facts were there for the for the general assembly members and and that helped out a lot that's fantastic and does that tie into your kick butts day yeah it does so kick butts day is similar to sticker shock youth go out to to retailers that that sell tobacco and 
remind them that it's illegal to to sell to youth that are underage ask if they have a we card sticker or, or look around if they can see one ask if they get any merchant education training and really encourage them to do that and offer themselves as a resource and kind of providing more information about the importance of that because it does fall on the merchant at that level does it yes it does but but both sticker shock and kick butt stay is another example of how we alone could not do that so the youth go out but they go out with an adult team leader for each of the teams and those team leaders come from the police department the sheriff's department and parks and rec and so do you feel that you get a good reception from local merchants yeah definitely yep. And is it just a question of them being informed and trained? I mean, obviously, nobody's interested in getting in trouble and getting any kind of citation on their business. Right. It's And, and we're not the enforcement aspect. We're the education aspect and awareness aspect and just making them aware about what the impact is of what they do for their advertising and, and to make sure that they're, they're carting when they should be carting. And do you think it does make a greater impact when you have the young people themselves walk in? Oh, oh. for sure. Yeah, because they're saying this is important to us. We don't we don't want our peers to be accessing these products and and again providing that information saying oh I noticed that you don't have a we card sticker or I I noticed that there wasn't as much information oh you haven't been trained here can we can we leave this with you can we leave this for your manager it's saying I, I live here I'm a young person and this issue is important to me that's that's fantastic. Um, and then you also partner uh, with a local high school for Titan Takeover. Tell us about that as well. So Titan Takeover is actually came from a young person that was a part of our high school club. And she said, we just want teens just want a safe place to hang out on a Friday night, not necessarily a program with a lot of asks for us but just a place where we can hang out and be teenagers somewhere to go somewhere that, to go that's not a bar that's not a place where they're going to have tem you know a temptation of some kind somewhere fun yeah so so titan takeovers are teen nights that's safe substance free supervised events and we rotate them at different rec centers around the city we have pizza we have a dj we have raffle prizes and we also have tables where organizations can can share about themselves we'll often share facts and trivia about our organization as well as our partner the alexandria campaign on adolescent pregnancy which is our local teen pregnancy prevention coalition so it's just a, an environment for them to hang out and just be teenagers and is that well attended oh yeah we had it we had an event in December. We had over 100 kids attend. Yeah, we typically have somewhere between 75 to 100. The nice thing is we usually have it at one teen center, as, as Emma mentioned. But through the support of Parks and Rec, there's two other central teen centers, our central rec centers that we use. Parks and Rec people will actually take a, a minivan and pick up youth from there and bring them to where. So we get the youth from all, all across town. That's fantastic. And then does it cost something for the teens? Or? No, it's no, it's free. Free pizza. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you get free better. Free pizza or free Chick-fil-A or whatever. Yeah. yeah it's, it, they get free food. They get entertainment. They get music. They get, you know, these photo booths they can do. They they get to just, as I must say, come booth, in and have yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, and, and again, we know how important it is to provide that space for teens where it's, it's somewhat structured, but it's just a place for them to hang out. Again, there's information and kind of trivia if they want to, but... A lot of them, they're playing basketball, they're dancing, they're chatting with their friends, and, and building that community connectedness is so vital to preventing substance use. And is this something that gets promoted through the schools? Do you work through the school mm -hmm. system? How does we that work? We have a great relationship with the school system, so working with their communications department to send it out, sending it out through various newsletters, sending it out through the city. I mean, any, any way we can get it out through all our events, we, we push it out. And the Parks and Rec Departments will promote it as well. So, yeah, it's, it's a multiple across agencies, across groups promotion for that event. Social media. Social for media, sure. yep. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, something called Healthy Conversations popped up. Tell us about that. Sure. So a couple years ago, there was this event that was actually called... Um, Community of, Commun concern. Community of Concern Dinners, where we actually would go in and talk to youth, uh, talk, talk to youth and parents about... 
um, drugs and alcohol and actually the consequences and how the brain develops. And as we start, we started doing that and was just primarily focused on that. But as, as Emma mentioned, the, the protective factors, the information is a lot the same, whether it's teenage pregnancy prevention, it's gang prevention, or, it's, or substance use prevention. So we actually moved it into making more healthy conversations, making healthy choices. So we're educating the youth and the parents about healthy choices. The important thing is the youth come in with their parents. They're there. Now, the th important th the other part, though, is that when we break up, youth are at tables with adults, but not with their parents, so they can have these conversations. And throughout the night, we provide scenarios. So adults and youth can talk about different scenarios. And one of my favorite scenarios is, is that you go to a party, uh, you're not drinking, your friends are drinking, and they want you to drive them home, what do you do? And that leads to a lot of interesting conversations among youth and, and parents about what do you do in that type of situation. And, yeah, and the situations escalate. The scenario is presented. So I believe the first one we had at the event this year was you're invited to a party. Parents, what do you want your children to ask? Children, what do you want your parents to ask? And, of course, the parents are saying, oh, I want to know if there's going to be an adult supervise, supervising the party. I want to know if who the, the kid that invited my child is and the youth offer very different things for what they want their parents to know and even another scenario because because they kind of escalate as you go on in the evening it says okay you've you've you're at the party and there's alcohol and drugs what do you want your child to do and the parents kind of share their input and the and the kids say you know, when I call my parent, I want them to ask as few questions as possible. So understanding where your child is coming from. But again, these conversations are happening with youth and parents that are not in the same family. And so it creates that comfortable environment. That's fantastic. And I know even within our family, there's a, you know, there's kind of a code. I'm happy to be the bad guy. I always tell them. That's why I yeah. get the big yep. bucks as the mom. A code you, word. Uh, you call me and say, I need to come home right now. I come get you or you get no questions yep. um, and that kind of conversation. But that's so important to, to free both the child and the parent to say, especially the teenagers, because they're they're getting there. September is recovery month. That's coming right up. What's happening that month? Yes. Yeah, so we're having a recovery celebration. That's that's one of our partnerships with the city. So it's just an event for anybody if they're in recovery or if they're not. And it's just celebrating people in recovery and, and celebrating their journey. So that'll be at a Lee Center. We have, I think we have a DJ there. We've had a moon bounce in the past, weather permitting, food. It's just a way to, to kind of recognize those people in, in their journeys. You really do so many things in Alexandria. It's almost difficult to boil it down. It truly is a partnership. But but before we close up here, Alan, it, I just want to add, what's really your heart behind all of this? Because you're involved with the Partnership for a Healthy Alexandria, the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition of Alexandria. What's your heart as a longtime Alexandrian? Well, actually, uh, my mother was an alcoholic. And uh, so I lived through that, that scenario. I lived through that, that trauma. And I know what it does to a family. So my hope is that so our children don't go down that path and that, the, that we actually prevail, provide those opportunities for youth and adults to, to seek recovery and to seek help and to lead a good life. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. That was very brave, and I appreciate that. I know you also offer a lot of resources for parents if they go on your website. And again, that's um, on the web. It's healthieralexandria.org slash SAPCA, which is S-A-P-C-A. -A. But I'm sure you can find it if you go on the healthieralexandria.org site. Yeah, um, and you can also Google preventitalexandria.org as a shorter no. way. That's very good. But you do have these resources for parents, I noticed, on a whole host of issues. We do, yeah. So, so again, we're really a, a resource for parents and community members, and we want to be that subject matter expert. So, so providing them information about the facts, because we know that telling young people, but really anybody, what to do and what not to do isn't effective because of the adolescent brain. And, and we really encourage parents, again, to have those conversations with their, their teams to educate themselves and, and set those boundaries 
and we provide that information to them. It's fantastic resources on e-cigarettes, on marijuana, on opioids, on tobacco, on underage drinking, the myths and the facts. So it really equips everybody involved. So I want to thank my guests this morning. I've been speaking with Alan Lomax. He has been on the SAPCA Board of Directors as the chairperson for 10 years. We can, we can hear why very clear his heart for Alexandria and also the chair of the Partnership for a Healthier Alexandria. And Emma Beal, who is the coordinator for the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition of Alexandria and your zeal for these young people comes through as well. So I want to thank you so much and just again to highlight your Alexandria Youth Leadership Conference coming up August 12th through the 14th and to give that website again. Yeah, so it's preventedalexandria.org. Thank you for joining me on ESPN 630, the sports capital. You can find us at ESPN630DC.com. I'm Barbara Britt.